Hi. Um, I never know how to say hi when I start these things off. It always comes out really weird. Um, I need to practice it. Anyway, um, as per my last tutorial, um, this is the second part of it. So um, on the last one, I showed you how to extend the wall um, in the in Photoshop, um, like I did in my last post, the Fallen Angel one. I am really stumbling over my words right now. Um, and this one is going to be showing you how to get the wings, um, put wings on your back. Um, so um, I'll just crack straight on with it. Um, it. Oh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments or DM me or something. Um, ah, I'll crack on. Right, so um, we left off the last tutorial. Um, well, actually, I'd cropped this down in the last tutorial, but I've uncropped it because um, I'm going to get the wings on now. Um, I just want to make sure I've got enough space. So, um, on to the how to put wings onto your back part of the tutorial. Now, this is kind of... Um, we'll show you the idea of how to do it. Obviously, it's going to be so different for each picture because uh, it depends on the angle you're at and whatnot as to what, what wings you've got and what steps you'll need to do. Um, but I'll show you how I did it, and um, it'll be pretty similar, I suppose, for, for other things. You just There might be other things that you need to factor in. So, without further ado, um, which it turns out I say a lot, I've realised, since I started doing these things, I say without further ado a lot. Um, and now I'm waffling. Um, anyway, right, so this is the um, picture that I down downloaded from Pixabay, I think it was, one of the free stock sites, um, that I turned into my angel wings. Um, it was the best I could find at the right angle because the bird's in profile, which is what I needed. So, I'm going to make a selection of the wings, just a rough one. Uh, and then using the, that was with the lasso tool, sorry, I didn't explain. Um, over in your different selection tools, there's the lasso tool, which just allows you to freehand draw, basically. So once you've got it selected, you use your move tool, and I click and drag it up to the file uh, that I want to place it into and then let go and it comes in. You could copy and paste it in um, or even drag it from uh, a folder on your computer or something. This tends to be how I do it. Um, so first thing I need to um, flip it because obviously the wings are going the wrong way. So uh, with the layer selected, it's brought it in as a new layer. With the layer selected, you go to um, edit, transform and flip horizontal to get it to flip the right way. And then I kind of start by roughly lining it up and um, changing the size of it up or down, depending on what it needs. In this instance, we need to make it smaller. So I do Control T to get your transform tool up. You could find it via the, um, the free transform via the drop down or, or on a Mac, I think it'd be Command T. Um, and then I'm just going to drag the corner until it's about the right size. Now, since I made my post, it's been pointed out to me that I made the wings a bit too small and that realistically they would be too small to carry my weight, um, which I found quite amusing. But uh, anyway, um, I'll not worry too much about that now and just make them a similar size to what I made them before, just for the purposes of this. So I think they're about there. And then you can also rotate it a bit if you want them at a slightly different angle. Um, so let's just call it that for now. Click your tick that was up there and that saved the transformation that you made. The next thing we need to do is um, cut out the wings. So um, I'm going to cut out all around this front wing. I'm even going to cut out the back wing because it's at the wrong angle, it wouldn't look right. So I'm just going to cut out the front wing and to the eye, the second wing would be hidden behind this one so you won't see it in the picture. I hope that makes sense. I'll cut all the way around here. I'll show you how I do this and then I'll try and speed up the video so that you don't have to spend hours watching me just cut out. Um, so to, to do my cutouts, with the layer that you want selected, if you go down to the layer mask tool, which is this rectangle with the circle in it, I add your mask. Now, um, if you've watched my previous tutorial video about using layer masks, um, you'll, um, in fact, I'll just say it all again. Um, so with layer masks, white is reveal and black is hide. So in this instance, it's white. So everything on that layer, this layer here, is is showing. So if we want to hide some bits, we need to paint over in black. So black has been selected. I've got my paintbrush selected. And I usually use a fairly hard brush for cutouts. It really depends on what you're cutting out and you'll need to tweak it. But I normally start around 85% and then fiddle with it um, if I need to. Um, opacity at 100% because we want to get rid of all of it. I zoom in pretty far. Um, and then I use as big a brush as I can because it tends to give a smoother line. 
So sometimes you need to go quite small to get into the detail areas, but I use a fairly big brush. And then with the mask <clears throat> box selected, you just start painting away the bits you need. And the great thing about a layer mask is it's non-destructive. So if you slip and cut out a bit that you don't mean to, you can just flip it back to flip it to white, which is your reveal, because you've hidden that part of the wing and you want to reveal it again, and then just paint it back. Um, so that's what's really handy. Anyway, with black selected, I'm going to go round and basically cut out all of the bits that I don't need. Um, And it is just a case for me anyway. The, you can use selection tools to select the background and cut it out that way, but I tend to prefer doing things mostly freehand because it um, tends to work better for me. Uh, everyone will find their own technique. But it is literally just a case of working your way around. And getting into all the nooks and crannies. That's not very good. Nooks and crannies. So I'm now going to speed up the video because now you're using the principle. You don't need to spend half an hour watching me cut this out. Um, Okay, so I've done my cutout. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I did it quite as well, to be honest, as the uh, actual post, but um, that's because I just looked at the time and realised that I have a hospital appointment soon, so I'm going to need to leave, <laughs> so I didn't want to spend too long on it. But um, I think I've done it well enough that you're going to be able to see the gist. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So yes, with uh, the wings cut out, um, we now need to kind of place them. So um, this will kind of be a little bit to, to what your eye thinks is right, but I would probably put them around, I think I put them around there, uh, just fiddling with the scale of them. Um, and the, oh, there's a bit I didn't cut out there, let me just do that quickly. Um, the wings are slightly at the wrong, um, angle I'd say. Uh, they don't quite, because the bird wasn't quite at the same kind of angle of, of shot and whatnot as I am, um, so I think they, they don't look quite right to me, so I'm going to use the um, perspective warp tool to just um, tweak them a bit so they look a little bit more realistic. Um, so if you go edit and perspective warp um, and you click and drag, you can set the kind of area that you're going to be warping um, and this kind of is setting the kind of current plane that they're on, I suppose. So once you've drawn that, you click warp, and then it changes from a blue box to a white box. And then you just drag the, um, the circles um, and, until it looks right for you. So I actually want the bottom bit to kind of push back into the image a bit more. Um, it's kind of hard to explain what I mean, but hopefully you'll see when I move them. It kind of tilts it back a bit. Uh, and then... It's kind of hard, there's a bit of trial and error involved. Um, but you just want to kind of keep pushing and pulling it until it looks about right for the perspective. Um, so once you're happy, you click the tick. Yeah, so you can see if I go back and forth, I've gone from that to that. It's not a huge change, but I think it makes a difference on them looking real. And then I'm just going to increase the size of them a bit, because I think the, the warp changed it a bit. Um, right, so the next thing I need to do is just make them look a little bit more realistic um, where they're meeting my back. So I think if we zoom in... Um, now, this was a relatively easy thing for me to do because I'm wearing a black top, um, and so it all kind of blended in quite nicely, but um, it might be a bit trickier, I suppose, if you're doing it with different colours and whatnot, but this is how I did it for this one. Um, so again, it was just using more um, masking, so just cutting away the bits that definitely wouldn't uh, 
um, weren't kind of quite sitting right. Uh, and then changing the opacity of my paintbrush down so that I'm then starting to kind of take away but not fully so it kind of starts to blend in a bit so you get a bit of a softer edge and then finding a natural line on my dress um, as the kind of contact point. Um, I've also had it pointed out to me that the wings aren't at the right contact point because uh, it would be my arm muscles that are pulling them. I think they technically should be further down your back. Um, but this is how I did it for my edit, so I will show you that. Um, who knew there were so many things to think about in terms of wings? So yes, yeah, so that I think now more or less to when the picture zoomed out and on a small space on Instagram and whatnot, you can't, you won't really be able to see the blend line. Like I said, because I've got that black top on, it really helps. Um, so that's the wing attached. I'm just going to move it a teeny tiny bit. Um, and then the next thing I did was I just needed the colour profile is not quite right. Um, it's a little bit warmer uh, than this shot. So I'm just going to add a, um, so with the layer selected, I'm going to add an adjustment layer and I'm going to add a um, colour balance adjustment layer and take the yellows to blue a little bit. Oh, and if you tick this box where it's got the square with the arrow, that clips it to the layer beneath, so it will only affect the wings, won't affect the background. Um, yes, yeah, so I changed the yellows to blue a bit. Uh, to a green a teeny bit. Down there, I think that blends a little bit better. Um, and then I'm also going to add a levels adjustment layer. Again, clip it to the wing layer and move my sliders in just so that the the light is starting to match it a bit better as well uh, which I think looks a bit better uh, there we go um that is more or less it um in terms of how i cut around the wings and how i attach them and the tools i used to do it um I can't remember offhand actually how close to my original this one looks, but uh, that certainly is the principle. And then it's just a case of cropping it into where I would have been happy with it. Uh, cropping into it was something like that, I think. Again, trying to work to the rule of thirds. And there we have it, wings attached. Um, once I'd finished this, I just popped it through into Lightroom to adjust all the kind of light and colour levels, but I just tried to get um, the basics done uh, for light and whatnot in Photoshop and then do the more complex stuff in Lightroom. I hope this has been helpful. Um, as I said before, any questions, please let me know in the comments or in a DM or something. Um, and I will try and do this again for my next post, see how I get on. Um, bye!